falling in love with Jesus. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! You, Lord, are exalted forever. Let us pray. Lord God, now we come before you again on this Lord's Day, thanking you for keeping us to this time. We bless your name, O God, and declare that you are our God and we are your people. We invoke your holy name and say, have your way in this worship service, God, wherever we are, touch hearts and minds. Help us to direct our thoughts to you, to be focused on you, to hear from you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We exalt your name, O Lord, and we say be exalted today. Let your name be magnified among us today, Lord. Let your people be edified by all that happens in this service. And Lord God, be glorified. This is our prayer in the matchless name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, welcome church family and friends. We are grateful for your presence with us today. 
This is our Remembrance Day Sunday when we would typically have a Remembrance Day ceremony in the worship service. But since we are sheltering in place, and we're not able to have that ceremony, I wanted to at least have the wreath here so that we could remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. We bless God for their service and we thank God for those who continue to serve to this day. And we just want, I ask you now to just take a, a moment, just, we just want to pause for a moment of silence. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Amen.
Thanksgiving time, Christian friends, and we thank God that we are able to bring a gift to the Lord. We give back just a portion of that with which God has blessed us. And we give with hearts of gratitude, recognizing that God is the provider of all. We here at New Horizons Baptist Church appreciate your generosity and your support, especially in this time of pandemic. And we know that we are being ambitious at this time and trying to get our building renovated, but we know that God has the provision for us by your hands. And so we invite you to give generously. The word of God says the Lord uh, blesses those uh, with the same measure that you use. It will be measured unto you. And so we receive these gifts uh, as good stewards in this house. Let's pray. Lord God, now as we come to the time of giving, we pray that you bless every giver and those who desire to give but have it not. We ask you, Lord God, to bless the gifts, to multiply the gifts so that we have enough to do what it is you have called us to do. We thank you, Lord, for continually working in our hearts to teach us how to give. And we give with hearts of gratitude, recognizing that you are the provider of all. And so, Lord God, be with us now. Let these gifts be used to the building of your kingdom on earth. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We come now, church, to this time of prayer when we lift up those who are sick among us and those who may be mourning. We've had a very hard week. We've had to bury our sister, Alma Johnston Times, and also the Reverend Tracy R. Gross. The Gross family also had a loss in uh, Zachary Gross. And we also pray for Dr. Cheryl Ann Beals who lost her father, Edward Beals. It has been a horrendous time for that family and for the church of God. And so we pray that God continues to comfort them. We also pray as I just uh, thought that, you know, there is a time of weeping, but there's also a time of joy and we thank God for those he has called into the ministry and for being able to ordain Pastor Lloyd Grant on last week. And we have upcoming ordinations of Pastor Alistair Johnson and Pastor Grace Skier. And so we thank God for what he's doing in the kingdom, even in the midst of our mourning. Let's pray together. Holy and gracious God, we come before you as the old saints would say, like empty pictures before a full fountain. We come, O oh Lord, asking you to fill us again, to pour unto, into us, Lord God, so that we might have strength for the coming days. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that we might come to you in prayer sharing everything that's on our hearts and our minds. And we ask you, Lord God, to hear our prayers today. Be with those, O oh Lord, who are sick among us. There are some who are preparing for procedures, Lord God, and we just ask you, Lord, to make the way clear for them that, Lord God, they would be able to have those treatments, O oh God, and that whatever is done would be effective for them. We pray strength for those, O oh Lord, who may be recuperating even now in hospital. And Lord God, those who are waiting to be placed into nursing homes, we ask you to give them patience and strength. We pray for families, 
for caregivers, O oh God. We pray for medical professionals and all who surround those who are in need of, of, of the ministry of health. And we ask you, Lord God, to give them compassionate hearts and spirits, that they would be kind people who would do what is good for the patient in their care. We pray for those in nursing homes, O oh Lord, and we ask you to keep them safe, even as we understand what has happened in our nursing homes during this pandemic. We ask you to put your hedge of protection around all of those who are residents, O oh Lord, and those who are working in those places to keep this pandemic under control so that it does not take any more lives out of our nurse, from our nursing home residents. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, O oh Lord. We pray for the families, O oh God, who have not only had um, the shock of death, but Lord God, just the, the grieving process and the work of trying to honor their loved ones. We ask you, Lord God, to replenish their spirits even now, to be near to them, to soothe their broken hearts, God. We pray, Lord God, that you would draw near to anyone who needs you so that they would feel your very presence. We pray for those who are in places of incarceration, O God, and we ask you, O Lord, to go into those places and to shine your light, to draw unto yourself, to convert the hearts and minds of the people in those places so that they might be disciples of Christ Jesus. So that Lord God, they might have changed hearts, transformed spirits, Lord, in the name of Christ. We pray for those who work in those places, that you would be with them as well. And that Lord God, you would help them, that Lord, they would be people of compassion. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. And we ask you to be with every one who is listening. Each one has some issue, some concern, some joy that they want to bring to you in this moment, Lord God. Hear our prayers wherever we are and be with your church all over the world. As we remembered the persecuted church on last week, oh Lord, we ask you to keep your hand with the saints wherever they are, Lord. Protect them from those who would want to harm them because of their faith. Help them, O oh Lord, that they might endure in the name of Jesus. We pray for our leaders, our local leaders, our provincial leaders, our national leaders, and our world leaders, God. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would put in those offices, in those places, Lord, those whose hearts are set on you. Give them wisdom so that they might make decisions that are good for your people. And we pray, Lord God, that you would protect them as they serve. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are a just God, a loving God and a forgiving God. And so we ask forgiveness of our sins. If we have not been the people you have called us to be, Lord, create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits in us. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, verses that are familiar to many of us. I'm reading verses 1 to 4 from the New International Version. Hear the word of the Lord. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we have been engaged over these past two months in a conversation, an ongoing discussion about the renewing of our minds and consequently the transforming of our spirits. 
Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we've talked about this renewed mind and what that means to us. And I just want to add a little bit of icing on that cake to say this morning that a renewed mind understands that despite the seasons of our lives, God is a God who keeps promises no matter how long it seems to take. Meditate with me today on this thought. It is coming. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we invite you to open up this word to our understanding. And we are grateful, God, ever grateful that you care enough to send us a word. Let it now, Lord God, be planted in us and let it uh, root in us so that it brings forth fruit for the kingdom. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, we can stand on your truth today that says when your word goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so do a work in us today. Let me decrease now so that you would increase and the word come forth as you would have it in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. As we were reminded this week uh, with an unseasonable snowfall, for those of you who are in warm territory and don't know it, we actually got some snow on November the 3rd or 4th. Um, uh, we had an unseasonable snowfall. Um, it, we were, it reminds us that we do not control the seasons. They happen to us. Uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall all happen whether we want them or not, whether we are prepared or not. People were running to get those snow tires put on their cars. Some of them had not even made their appointments, but that first hint of snow woke us up. The seasons come by the cosmic clock and not by our clock. The rhythm of the seasons can teach us about our spiritual lives and the ways of God. As we enjoy the last of the autumn season here, despite that little snow, consider that though it is a season of beauty with spectacular colors, it is also a season of decline when some things must die. This fall, or the, the, the fall, is a time of paradox. Uh, to our natural eye, we see the leaves change, we see the leaves fall, and we see the leaves die. Trees may look dead, they may look bare and lifeless, but beyond our natural eye, beneath the surface, the seed is being planted to bear fruit in seasons to come. Most of us would not have imagined that eight months later, we would still be dealing with this pandemic. Church communities everywhere have suffered many losses in this time. And even if not directly related to the pandemic, uh, we could not gather, we could not mourn together as family. And when we could come together in small numbers, we're not supposed to hug, we're not supposed to do all of the things that we would normally be inclined to do, that we would be naturally inclined to do, especially for those that we love. There has been lots of grieving in this time of pandemic, but there has also been lots of joy. So we experience the paradox of a time of weeping, but also a time of laughter. People have found unique ways to celebrate, to come together, to show their love for one another. People have had drive-by parties and, and communities coming together, just dancing on the streets and doing all kinds of things to say, you know what? This is happening, but we're in it together. There have been glimpses of joy in this time. Mourning or weeping and joy, mourning and dancing. There is uprooting, but there is also planting. 
of tearing down, but also building. I was just talking about our church building and, and how we are uh, in the middle of a renovation, tearing down parts of our old building and building back new parts, a uh, renovated building, an expanded building. COVID-19 has made it a definite time of scattering. But as churches worship today, by whatever means, it is also a time of gathering. The enemy thought he was shutting down the church and the sh church persists and comes right into the homes of people everywhere because we are the church. When it looks like the death of some things uh, with our natural eye, we need to see with our spiritual eye. We need to discern in our spirits that in the scattering, we are planting necessary and essential seed for our future. We have discovered new ways of being, new ways of staying connected, new ways of keeping the tie. On the surface, there may be some frustration with the disruption of our norms, but beneath the surface, seed is being planted to bear fruit in seasons to come. And that's a hallelujah right there. In North America, November 11, mark, November 11 marks Veterans Day, or here in Canada, we call it Remembrance Day. When our armed forces go into battle or they are on peacekeeping assignments, their action is not just for the moment. They are establishing order that is hoped to last for generations, if not forever. They do not put themselves in harm's way and in some cases make the ultimate sacrifice of their lives because they are only thinking of themselves and this present generation. The immediate conflict may be resolved, but that is not the end. Our armed forces are sacrificing, securing our freedom and our future. There is much more fruit that may come in future seasons, they are doing that work for future generations. And on the home front, we are planting and we are uprooting. And uprooting can be painful. For us here at New Horizon, it has been two years that we have been displaced during the renovation of our church building. And there may be a sense of loss in that. As someone pointed out to me last week, churches who have usable buildings understate the importance of buildings because they have one. <laughs> when you don't have one, you understand how important it is sometimes to be able to do your ministry out of such a place. We've all been out of our buildings during this pandemic, but it is different when you have a building to go back to. For those without buildings, there may be a sense of loss and we are free to grieve that loss. Experiencing loss makes us confront our humanity. Loss causes us to see our limits. Through loss, we realize that God is in control of our lives. When we see the seasons change, when we go from one way of being to another, as it affects us personally, professionally, in our communities, we understand the change of seasons and that sometimes in that change, we experience loss. But we understand in those losses that God is the one who is in control. We are the creatures. We are God's creatures. God is creator and God is sovereign. Just as we do not control the seasons in nature, we do not control the seasons of our lives. It is unhealthy and unbiblical to suppress our grief. We read that in the days of Noah in Genesis 6, that God was grieved about the state of humanity. And Jesus, God incarnate, 
offered up laments through prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears. Jesus wept. Church, it is biblical to grieve. Type that in the chat. Say, let it out. <laughs> let it out. You have to release it. You have to express your grief. Let it out. It is necessary for your spiritual and emotional health. Loss is going to happen to us all. By example, Jesus teaches us that we should not spin it or try to cover it up. And Remembrance Day and the ways that we honor and remembrance and remember those who have gone before us helps us deal with loss and grief honestly, prayerfully, and in a straightforward way. When we do that, our experiences with loss and grief can help us grow into the women and men that God has called us to be. Now, there are different ways to grieve. And today, I want to encourage you to allow yourselves good grieving. Good grieving is not only letting go, but also letting the loss bless us. We did a Bible study some time back on enlarging our spirits through grief and loss or something like that, or enlarging our faith through grief and loss. And we recognize that when we grieve properly, we can actually grow in our faith. There are things that, uh, that mean the most or have left the greatest impression on us in our lives. And some of them were seasons in our lives um, as even a part of our church family at New Horizons. Now is the time to let those memories and those experiences bless us. Even in our grief, when we had to bury so many of our matriarchs, our seniors, our mothers, our church mothers, we remember their lives and we remember how they planted in us and the words that they spoke and those memories blessed us. Now is the time to embrace the truth that Jesus taught that a seed that falls to the ground must die to produce many more seeds. I hope what they planted in our spirits stays with us and we plant them into the next generation. Resurrection only comes after real death. Our losses are real, but so is our God. He is the living God. Now is the time to embrace what God has in store for us. And sometimes God has spoken things into your life and it's taking longer than you had hoped. There are some dreams and, and goals you have that have not yet come to fruition. And I just stand to remind you this morning that it is coming. Now in this pandemic, those things may seem even farther away than they were before because they're delayed, but everything happens in God's good time. God does not operate on our clock. We were surprised by the pandemic, but God is not surprised by the pandemic. And so whatever God has promised you, I want to remind you today that it is coming. Maybe, you know, you weren't quite ready for it yet. Maybe you still had to let go of some things, some attitudes, and even some people. Sometimes we have to let go of old ways of thinking and our own hard-heartedness. Sometimes we're too selfish and too self-serving for our own good, and that causes the delay. I know we've been praying for a long time at our church for our building our physical building, but maybe God is trying to rebuild us, our spiritual selves on the inside. And though we are not yet perfect, though we still have a way to go, and though the completion of the building is taking longer than anticipated, I want you to get excited this morning. I want you to stay excited and hold on to the truth that God is working it all out. Be excited that our time and the Lord's time are lining up. Get excited that it seems that God has now declared it is coming. We are in it and God will see us through to win it. Kohelet, the preacher of Ecclesiastes, reminds us that there is a time for everything. And these times are cyclical. 
The ancestors planted. Now we uproot, but soon we plant again. We tear down to build, and the time may come when we tear down again, but guess, get, but guess what? We will tear down again to build again. We may weep over our past, but it clears our hearts so that we can laugh into the future. It does not mean weeping will not come again, but so will laughter. There is room for all of it in healthy spirits because the times of our lives are cyclical. And people who are seasoned in the faith know that. Trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Maybe you've watched some others who seem to have it all. It looks like everything is working out for them while you're still struggling. But every believer is a child of God and God has the best in store for all of us. It may be taking longer for you to receive or achieve what you believe God has spoken for your life, but it is coming. What God has for you is still yours. Sometimes we take shortcuts and detours trying to help God get to that place sooner and we end up messing it up so that it is further delayed because what we've done now has to be cleaned up. Be patient. <laughs> like they're telling us in the United States election, be patient. Your time is coming. Our church is 188 years old and a lot of things have happened since the church was first established. And the makeup of the community has changed. Many of our members live, uh, no longer live in the uh, surrounding area, uh, or they, I'm sorry, they live in the surrounding areas. I'm thinking about the places that are out, but not in the immediate area of the church. The church has had to make adjustments through the years. This is a reminder that now, emphasized by the necessity to be still in this time of the pandemic, that now is the time to take stock of the past and envision the future. The kingdom is advancing and we want to advance with it. Sometimes we're praying to God to bless what we're doing, but we need to be looking to see what is it that God is doing so that we can get on board with what God is doing, right? And so we want God, we want, to, we want to be on the same page with God. We want our wills to be in the will of God. We want God to have control over what we do and how we make out because God will bring us out in the best way possible. So when the kingdom is advancing, we should want to advance with it. And this is not just true for the corporate body. This is true for all of us as individuals. This is true for every believer. We have to be flexible. We have to be agile. We have to discern the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. And we have to adjust our ways of being so that we continue to flourish. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world. There may be a pandemic, but we as the people of God can continue to flourish. The church can keep marching on if we are following God's agenda. God's kingdom is everywhere and anywhere that God reigns. And we are under God's watchful and loving and protective and promise keeping eye. God does much with our little when we walk in obedience and we trust God for the outcome. No matter what it looks like. It's one of my favorite phrases, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks like. We walk by faith and not by sight. No matter what it looks like, no matter what COVID-19 does, we do not lose focus. Type that in the chat. No matter what it looks like, do not lose faith. Do not be discouraged. It is coming. So follow in the way that God is directing us, not choosing your own way or thinking that you know better than God what needs to be done. <laughs> it is coming. So stay committed to proclaiming God's truth in person, on video, to your family, in your community. Stay committed to sharing the Lord's love with those who may not know him. 
invite them, welcome them into your home. Well, you can't do that in COVID, but into the fellowship of the church and into the kingdom. You can do it on FaceTime. You, you can do it on a Zoom call. I know our kids last week had, had a Zoom call together, some of the Sunday school kids, because they just wanted to be uh, in touch with one another. It is coming, the, the promises of God to you. So be a true reflection of God's kingdom, a kingdom of every nation, tongue, and tribe, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. It is coming. So be steadfast in service to God and to his church, making the Lord first and foremost in your lives. It is coming. So uh, reflect Jesus in all you say and in all you do, having a spirit of excellence. It is coming. So stay united, united in our mission to fulfill the great commission, going out into all the world, making disciples, baptizing them and teaching them all about Jesus. <laughs> what God has planned for us, we cannot even imagine, but we know it is better than anything that we could possibly plan for ourselves. First Corinthians 2, 9 says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. There is a time church for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Type in the comments, it is coming. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but hear me when I say your blessing is coming, your change, your provision, your deliverance, your healing, your revelation, whatever God has spoken into your spirit, your promise is coming. So walk boldly into your future, not being afraid, but trusting in God. God has not given us a, a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. It is coming. So let the past be the past. It was never meant to last. Forget the former things, the Lord says. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? It is coming. So put aside old hurt. Put aside old disappointments. Embrace forgiveness. Embrace hope. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. It is coming. So look beyond what you see with your natural eye and see with your spiritual eye. I once was blind, but now I see. It is coming. So be imaginative, be creative as you embrace new ways of being God's people in this pandemic. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. It is coming. So let every heart be turned to the Lord and every hand be put to the plow. Trust in the Lord and do good. It is coming. So stop playing church and start being the church. Walk by faith and not by sight. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do the work of him who sent Jesus while it is day because night is coming when no man can work. First Corinthians 16, 13 says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. It is coming. So strengthen your witness. Strengthen your witness uh, so that your witness uh, can be strength to others. It is coming, church. So, so, so show your trust in God so that God can trust you with much more. Some trust in chariots uh, and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Do not let doubt 
Do not let fear, do not even let grief over your losses keep you from all that God has planned for you. See what great love the Father has lavished on us so that we could be called the children of God. And that is who we are or what we are. We are heirs of the kingdom and joint heirs with Christ. All that God has is ours. Do not let the enemy block your progress. Let your progress block the enemy. We are engaged in a great work. God is stretching our tent. There is nothing lost that will not be regained in Christ Jesus. There is a time to mourn, but there's also a time to dance. We say farewell to the past and we look forward to the transformation for which we have been waiting these many years. Whatever God has promised to you, whatever God has spoken into your life, whatever it is that you have desired to do because God gave it to you in your spirit, I just stand to remind you today, it is coming. Amen. face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until we meet again.